Hi everybody and welcome to another video from The Tech Report. I'm Jeff and today we're going to be looking at a gaming PC we put together recently that we like to call the Breadbox. With some help from the folks at Gigabyte, OCZ, G-Skill, Logitech, and EVGA, we set out to build a small form factor gaming PC that packs plenty of power without going overboard. Let's see how it turned out. Every system starts off with a case, and we picked out EVGA's Hadron Hydro Enclosure. This case is a matte black steel exterior with a glossy plastic front panel that should look great anywhere. The perforated metal top panel hides room for a 240mm extra thick radiator, and we'll be adding one of those to this build in just a bit. Inside we have two 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch combo bays, a built in 500 watt 80 plus gold power supply, two 120 millimeter exhaust fans, and of course room for a mini ITX motherboard and a dual slot graphics card. To cool our Intel Core i5-6600K CPU, we picked out EVGA's custom liquid cooling kit for the Hadron Hydro. This kit comes with a pump, an extra thick 240 millimeter radiator, a variety of fittings, all the tubing you'll need, coolant, and a water block for the CPU. The next major component in any system is the motherboard, and for this build we've chosen Gigabyte's GA-Z170N Gaming 5. This board comes with a number of desirable features, including 6 SATA ports, 4 of which can be converted to SATA Express, an M.2 slot on the back of the board with 4 lanes of PCI Express 3.0 connectivity, built-in Intel Wi-Fi and Bluetooth along with Intel's Alpine Ridge USB 3.1 controller, Realtek ALC 1150 audio with premium components in the signal path, and killer E2200 gigabit ethernet. Around back we get analog and digital audio outputs, the killer gigabit ethernet jack, USB 3.0 and 3.1 ports including a Type-C port, HDMI and DVI outs for the processor graphics, more USB ports, the wireless antenna connectors, and a PS2 port. For memory, we chose G-Skills Trident Z DDR4 3000 16GB kit. The two-tone aluminum heat spreaders and red accents on this memory look great with our Gigabyte motherboard, and these DIMMs also come with XMP 2.0 profiles for one-click overclocking support in the motherboard's firmware. For graphics power, we chose the mini ITX version of Gigabyte's GeForce GTX 970. This card offers 1101 MHz base and 1241 MHz boost clocks in its most aggressive mode, yet it measures in at just 6.6 .6 inches long. The single fan cooler might have some trouble keeping those clocks up, but even so, it's amazing how much graphics power you can pack into a card this small these days. For storage, OCZ sent us two of its Vector 180 solid state drives. We have a 480GB drive for the operating system and some programs, plus a 960GB drive for games, large media files, or basically anything else we want to put on bulk solid state storage. So now let's take a look at our completed system. You can see that we have a bit of a cable mess going on in the front of the case thanks to our non-modular power supply, but the GeForce GTX 970 fits great inside the Hadron Hydro, and the OCZ SSDs nestle right into the 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch combo bays. EVGA's custom liquid cooling kit for the Hadron Hydro looks really neat once it's installed, but I had to do quite a bit of trial and error to get the tubing lengths right for this system, and I also had to modify some fittings at the pump in order to get that tubing into the case without kinking it. Even so, I'm pleased with the way it looks, and it cools our Core i5-6600K quite well. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way this bread box turned out, save for one thing, I just wish it was a little quieter under load. When it's running all out, this system produces about 50 decibels of noise, which is quite loud if it's sitting up next to you on a desk and you're not wearing headphones. In the living room though, that sound gets drowned out by the sound of the TV itself if you're playing a game, and if you put on closed headphones in an office, you probably won't notice the sound levels too much. Still, if I was to do this again, I'd probably try and go with a quieter graphics card and liquid cooling system. No gaming PC is complete without peripherals, and I picked out a keyboard, mouse, and headset from Logitech to finish off our bread box. This stealthy looking keyboard is Logitech's G410 Atlas Spectrum. Logitech uses a 10 keyless design, meaning it lops off the number pad for easier access to the mouse without awkward wrist or shoulder angles. I really like this design, and the G410 has become my go-to gaming keyboard even when I'm not gaming on the breadbox. Under each keycap is one of Logitech's Romer G mechanical key switches. These switches feel a lot like Cherry MX Browns, 
in that they have a tactile bump on the way down, but they don't click like Cherry MX Blues. Thanks to the design of these key switches, the RGB LED backlighting on the G410 is among the most intense I've seen. If you care about the quality of the backlighting on your keyboard, Logitech's are definitely worth a look. For my mouse, I picked out Logitech's G502 Proteus Spectrum. This mouse is similar to the company's older G502 Proteus Core, but it adds an RGB LED backlit logo that can sync up with Logitech's other RGB LED illuminated peripherals. The G502 is covered in programmable buttons. Under the thumb, we get a sniper button and back and forward buttons, and under the index finger, we get on-the-fly DPI switching. The scroll wheel on the G502 is Logitech's signature dual mode design that can switch between clicky and free spinning modes at the press of a button behind the scroll wheel. The second button behind the scroll wheel is a mode button that can switch among the mouse's onboard profiles. The G502Cs with an insane 12,000 DPI optical sensor, though I keep mine set to about 800 DPI for most games. The mouse slides freely on any surface thanks to four big PTFE feet and a ring of PTFE material around the sensor itself. No gaming mouse is complete without a set of tunable weights these days, and Logitech includes a set of five 3.6 gram weights with the G502. I like to use two of these weights inserted toward the back of the mouse to give it a more 50-50 weight distribution. To pipe that all-important in-game audio to my ears, I chose Logitech's G633 Artemis Spectrum headset. These USB cans can do a number of fancy things, including 7.1 surround sound emulation, although I usually turn that off with most headsets because it makes me sick to my stomach. Even in stereo mode, this headset sounds great for both music listening and gaming, and it's got a number of handy features like a swing away microphone that mutes automatically when it's not in use, and three programmable buttons on the left ear cup. Like the other Logitech peripherals we've looked at so far, the headset has RGB LED backlighting behind the Logitech logos and a pair of stripes on its backside that'll look great if you stream on Twitch or even on that eSports stage. That's it for this video from the Tech Report. Our thanks once again to Gigabyte, OCZ, G-Skill, EVGA, and Logitech for making it possible. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, be sure to click like below and subscribe to our channel. If you didn't like it, tell us what we can do better next time in the comments. In the meantime, be sure to check us out at techreport.com for the latest news and reviews in the PC hardware world. Thanks for watching.